Welcome back, guys. And if you guys are just joining this campaign, please make sure to go ahead and check out the other missions of this campaign in the playlist. We're actually, once again, in a defensive position. I don't believe our stugs are going to help us here. But if you guys want to see an absolute tank victory for us, make sure to check out the episode before this one. In this particular episode, guys, it looks like we're dealing with enemy cavalry units, also enemy infantry attacking our position. Now, it looks like we've got some mortar units and some dug-in infantry. Let's jump into this icy nightmare and see if we can't hold Ivan off yet another day. All right, folks, so this is a pretty standard battle setup uh, that we've got going here. Uh, the issue is that we're trying to actually defend two locations, and we have this all stuck in one area. So I'm going to spread the, some of these guys out to Odinsov, but we've got all of our commanders from what I can see over here. So I'm really going to try and extend this line, make it as even as possible, um, and pretty much just have like a long defensive line. Now, if you guys see over here, we have an AT gun, and with this, I can't place this on the map. I need to actually take a look over here to place it. Uh, because, of course, we want this as effective as possible if enemy tanks uh, start to approach or anything like that, assuming the enemy even has tanks. And honestly, guys, I don't know if they do. Also, probably a good idea to move these units uh, into these dachas over here, and hopefully they'll be able to defend us uh, from Ivan or at least slow him down. Now, yeah, the tanks are definitely not helping us in this battle, guys, so it's all going to be our, our SS infantry, uh, LSAH, uh, holding on here for dear life. Let me grab the commander, Kubel, and I'm going to put him back here, sort of in the trees. Over there, I believe we also have a group, but they have not yet arrived to the battlefield, guys. So we'll decide what to do with them when the battle actually begins. At this point, you can see the guys being set up, and I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. It's absolutely beautiful. We have got just pretty much a honeycomb network of trenches uh, here. It's just, it's like Christmas time for Hitler. It's not good for anyone but him. Uh, as you can see here, just a tremendous amount of uh, defenses, machine gun emplacements, etc. But let's be honest, if they've got a single T-34, pretty much ruin our entire uh, plan here. So our plan is pretty much wait for Ivan, like always, and react when he approaches. Now we do have also these units over here that we are going to have to place uh, during the battle. And what I'm going to do go ahead and get started here what i'm going to do is actually grab these guys and force them to move into the buildings so a flare pop up and some of our units have no commander that's really not surprising um because we've been in quite a few battles and again i'm just going to try and just take these machine gun units some of them could be mortar units some of them could be machine gun units and just get them uh, to go into these dahas i'm trying to just select single ones here um, because quite frankly i think that and I don't like these guys in this position. Uh, I think that it's probably better to just move them one by one. But I'm going to have to really zoom in here and double click. All right. Nicht nine. There we go. We almost had it. What? What is he doing? What is that guy doing? All right, no, screw that. I'm just going to have to move them all together. Um, that should be... That, that's got to be my fault somehow. Or... Uh, could just be an issue here. That being said, the important thing is we want to get those guys into the Daha here. We also have um, this AT gun with Gruber. It's actually more of an artillery gun, uh, but I'm going to probably want to reposition him too. So let me actually take a look at Gruber. I'd like to get him kind of higher up there on the hill. I'm going to take Gruber here and just push him up with a fast move. Not always the best idea. I can also hear a lot of artillery hitting our position, guys, so we're probably taking fire from Ivan. Um, along the line here. That being said, guys, I'm going to save you from a lot of waiting, and I will come back when we make contact with the Soviets. Mein Gott, you will not believe this, man. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, the amount of tracer rounds is beautiful, guys. But what's not beautiful is the enemy already has some units in these homes right here, these Dajas. Um, that are probably going to be a problem. You can actually see, I believe, our AT gun firing away there. And so far, our guys are getting a great line of sight here on the enemy. I'm just going to point these guys towards them too. Make sure that we've seen them. But I think our guys uh, have pretty much spotted them. You can see our mortars are already laying waste to those positions. And a lot of them exposed here on the hill. In battles 1 and 2 of this campaign, this is where we got a lot of kills on Ivan. It's pretty much just them being out in the open here. Um, on a slope and it just gives us a chance it's like shooting uh, what's the expression uh, shooting fish in a barrel or a turkey shoot it just gives us the the 
ability to use those tracers to pretty much spot those targets and wipe them out. I'm hoping the same is going to be true here, but again, we don't know. Ivan is pretty close at this point, but I can already see some mortars exploding there. And that's always enjoyable to see uh, those mortars hitting their targets. Let's see. Oh, man, that's, that's definitely working. This is going to be YouTube demonetization for sure. There we go. Nice. Beautiful. So they're in this Daha. You can actually see the machine gun, and you can see the mortar hitting that position heavily, man. I think we may have just taken that machine gun out. Uh, I can actually see blood in there. And we can't get a perfect view, but yep, that's a Soviet down. That is beautiful. It's actually a Soviet commander. And we've set this thing on fire, guys, with mortars, uh, probably some artillery, and maybe even the tracer rounds. Um, you know, got to keep in mind, these are wood-thatched roofs, or straw-thatched roofs, I should say. So this is uh, this is pretty easy to take down. If you can hit a, if you can hit the target at night, especially, it's going to make a really beautiful uh, burning uh, burning torch effect. Look at that! My goodness. All right, I think the Soviets are feeling pretty silly that they tried to seek cover in that house, but I would have done the exact same thing. And my question now is, since we know they're not moving into this area, they did bombard the house with artillery, but maybe we could take some of these guys, uh, some of these machine guns, and move them over in this area. Uh, then again, you know what? I don't even think we need them. I think we're going to be able to hold this position. Uh, and that house is going to do nothing but make it very easy for our men to see uh, for 50, 60 meters in this location. And look at that. Oh, yeah. Popping flares. Enemies popping flares on us for sure. They want to see where all of this vicious machine gun fire uh, is coming from. Now, I'm sure our men are also delivering some rifle fire. Maybe not at this distance. Yeah, it could just be the MGs. Oh, that's quite close be really thankful um, that we have the positions we do. Let's head to the burning Daha and see what's going on in there. That is just an amazing sight. Oh my gosh, look at that, guys. <laughs> just ran out of the burning Daha. I believe that guy um, had also gotten shot. Yeah, or that could be shrapnel, but just incredible, guys. Look at this. That thing is absolutely torched. Incredible job. Got another burning guy over here. They just completely had to evacuate. And at this point, I think the most contested position is going to be Ordivska, where we are right now. Then again, they're popping a lot of flares over here in between Ordivka and Ordivka East, or in Ordivka South in this case. Um, so it's a little worrying. Uh, they might be probing that area to see if they can't break through. That's it, boys. Keep them both. Keep them under fire. Of course, every time we fire, we are giving away these positions, but I think that's just fine. During this attack, I don't really care if they can see us. They're not going to be able to outgun us. Just look at this angle aiming down at them. We have a huge advantage. As long as no T-34 show up, I'm going to feel pretty safe here. If you guys have made it uh, to this point in the video, please make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Always like to hear what you think. And also hit that like button. Drop a comment, obviously, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, if you guys are enjoying this and you haven't seen the other episodes previously, you definitely should. You might think, oh, it's not a big deal. You know, it's a series. I just want to follow what's coming next. But we've had some incredible battles, especially the last episode. Just probably one of the best uh, tank victories I have had in Gravitine Tactics. Come on. Or I wouldn't actually say tank. They're uh, Stug assault guns, but close enough. Okay, we got a capture. What is this? No way. Please don't tell me those are our men. That can't be. Wow, that is very strange. I'm not sure why, um, but we just had a few men surrender to the Soviets. It could be that they're moving closer to these Dachas. That is shameful, guys. I mean, we are totally winning this battle right now. See no reason for them to have done that. Could be because they didn't have their commander, and we have had a few commanders get killed here. Like, for instance, that artillery is brutal, um, and it's targeting, of course, Goba and this gun. We had to move them over here, though. Well, we didn't, but we decided to, and now we're in not such a great position. Just take the single unit here and move him with a fast move into the Daha. Provide pretty much another line of fire towards the enemy. I'll try to get closer with these guys, too, because we know the enemy is really going for the center. So I'm going to try to uh, pretty much pull, put all of our eggs in one basket, for lack of a better analogy, to be able to stop uh, any advance. I like to see our guys in there. Look at that. It's creepy, man. Our guy is just waiting. As you can see, we got a frozen lake over here. I believe it's frozen. Yeah, and uh, there's definitely some Soviet units over here. 
perhaps a lot more than we're expecting. Yep, we got some more enemy contact. And it's going to be all the way back there. Wow, I don't know how we got that. That's beautiful, guys. We see the enemy trench lines. So the enemy does have some trenches over here uh, defending the Soviet city of Sovkoz, or Soviet town of Sovkoz, really. So, of course, it would be a bit premature for us to try a counterattack now. I think it would be. Maybe not. Um, but they do have trenches there. It's good for us to know in the future. In future battles, we'll pretty much know where their trench positions are. I believe that Dhaka is completely burned down now. Yeah, it's gone. Wow. Incredible, guys. Just goes to show you, cover doesn't always protect you, especially if it's made out of, you know, wood and uh, and hay. It's, it's not going to be that effective. All right, we've got some more artillery coming in here. Once again, the enemy trying to get into this position. I'm going to be, I'm pretty sure that the vehicle lost here is going to refer to the, um, the gun we had, the uh, artillery gun, but I could be wrong. Okay, so potentially, no, I think it's actually uh, mortar here. Did manage to hit one of our mortars, and they're getting some pretty effective fire, not to mention, look at that. We've got enemies here, guys. I did not know that. Oh, my goodness. Fire, fire, oh, fire. This guy's firing, trying to hit them. We have enemies definitely in this building. Very sneaky by the Soviets, but of course we want to try and take that building back as soon as possible. Now I don't usually do this with this kind of unit, but I might order a charge here um, into the Dacha. I think our guys are going for it already though. There we go. There we go, they're inside, they're inside. No, <laughs> no we came back out. Get in there. One of them got inside through the veranda. I think we got one of them. We may have killed all of them, actually. We'll come back to that position later. Um, but for now, we just need to keep on firing, keep the fire going on this position ahead of us. And again, the enemy continues to fire those rounds out to try and knock us out of these buildings and uh, and pretty much take, um, you know, take, take control of one or two of these buildings, which would really be enough for them to start moving very, very quickly into town. Up here, I also started seeing some officer class uh, units, and this is what I was worried about. These guys are going to have to fight off this enemy group by themselves, and they don't really have any cover. Let's just hope that their shooting skills are pretty damn good. Let's see what kind of weapons we got here. They're using one of them. It's got a PPSH, looks like. Using a Soviet weapon, and this one's got an MP40. So yeah, these guys, uh, proper LS LSAH units, uh, they're going to be able to do some serious damage to the enemy. In fact, I might do what I like to call sort of a little uh, Valhalla squad. Since they're not going to make it through. Um, but we're going to take this Valhalla squad. And I'm just going to go ahead and charge with them. Pretty much just to have the enemy units focus on us. We can draw their fire. See where they're firing from. And return fire with these guys. Okay, we've also got some snow falling, guys. The blizzard has begun. And actually, you can see right there our men firing pretty heavily. I think the plan is working. I think they're going to they're gonna try and turn their attention towards this unit. As you can see, this is what I was talking about. Got an enemy commander somewhere over here. And getting rid of him would absolutely help the cause. We got those units out. Beautiful. So now it's getting very dark, as you can see, guys. Um, and I think also the, the blizzard, the snow. This is really just pretty basic snowfall, but I think it's intended to sort of uh, replicate a blizzard. Um, is, is making things quite dark, quite difficult to see for both sides. So at this point, we want to just keep on holding out. Here we go. They're popping flares. When they pop flares, especially in this battle, that is dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Luckily, that Dacha is still giving us a line of fire on any units running past it. And I think the enemy commander has to be crazy to send units in this direction at all. Uh, interesting thing, though, I just kind of saw this here. That looks to me, and I could be wrong, that looks like it could be a trench line. So their trenches could be a lot closer than we anticipated. Um, right now, we think their trenches are back here, but they could have some right there. And if that's the case... As I said, um, this is a much closer battle than I imagined. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we got to get out of here. Grab these guys. Um, we've got to move our men into uh, a supporting position. So I'm going to have these guys fast move uh, into this line of trees. And we don't have the best in terms of um, actual, uh, how can I put this, like trajectory, because they're, they're going to be coming down on us. Uh, but I think it'll work. I think we'll be okay. 
Just have Gruber keep firing. Gruber kills him. Alright, boys. I will try to uh, come back in a bit here, guys. Um, you know, typically uh, with these GT videos, I try to do some editing, but this battle has just been consistently action-packed, so it's been kind of hard to break away. Uh, but we will return uh, in a little bit, guys, as the battle has progressed. Well, guys, in true Soviet fashion here, if we take a look, the enemy is getting closer and closer, and no matter how many of these guys we knock down, we have knocked down at least 100, um, they continue to move on us. So we're hitting them with some arty now. Uh, as you can see there, that pretty much destroyed one of the roofs on the Dacha and seems to be damaging this one over here too. But they're definitely in town over here. Um, some of them have managed to make it across the river, make it past our machine guns, and they're starting to try and get into Ordivka. But I hope they don't actually get there completely. As you can see, the machine guns, uh, some mortars, we pushed them up here, some commanders as well. And I'm kind of hoping that just being here in the, for lack of a better term, reeds, um, we'll, we'll defend them, protect them, whatever you want to call it. At this point, though, we're pretty much still holding the town, and I don't anticipate this situation changing. Unless Ivan has some tanks or decides to waste a whole lot of artillery rounds on this position and knock our boys out of here, I just don't think they're going to be making it through, um, and hopefully we're going to be able to hold the area. Got some more enemy contacts here, guys, but once again, that's way back here, and they're actually moving away from the battlefield uh, where we located their trenches. So I think they might be bugging out themselves. <laughs> if you take a look over here, these are enemy trench positions, uh, and they're way, way past their trenches. So either they've got another, um, another line they're running to, or they're starting to realize that this is not a battle they can win. I hate, though, the enemy... Um, flares constantly popping up and just imagine how terrifying that would be in a battle like this i mean you're looking out the the few guys that you actually get to shoot out are pretty much just flashing lights um you know you're pretty much shooting at what you think are enemy shots coming at you um, and then suddenly you got a huge flare popping next to you you better bet these guys know that they're just an obvious target to the enemy what about this gun what have they been doing i want you to shoot boys this thing's going to be very useful if they've got any of those T-34s. I don't think they do, though. And in my crazy Agrippa offensive style, I am so tempted to grab these units and try and grab Sovkoz. But I'm not going to. Um, we're going to really try to play this one safe, like I mentioned in Episode 1. And we're just going to try and kind of do what the army would do in this situation, which I think is just hold the position as long as we can. Um, also, target those guys from the houses in the Dachas. Don't want these Soviets gaining a foothold. If a few of them get into the buildings, oh well. But if an entire group does, that's a problem. And you can see here, look at that beautiful, beautiful Soviet machine gun here. They've got that thing aimed right at us. But I don't think they know exactly where to fire it. They've got a faint notion of where we are, but not an exact location. This was our um, Valhalla squad here, who we did not think were going to survive. But it looks like most of them have made it. Uh, one of the guys did get knocked down, but I think the rest are going to be just fine. And just for shits and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and try and move towards Sovkosh. I, I don't think it's going to work, but what the hell. Let's see what happens. I'm really hoping the enemy will offer a ceasefire. Um, at this point, I would gladly accept... We get to hold our positions, you know, we don't lose any ground whatsoever. We don't take any ground, but in the next battle, we're hopefully going to be able to use that SDKFC um, once again. So you know, we're going to probably be on the offensive anyway. Let's see where that commander got killed. Oh boy. Yeah, it's just a truck commander, but we can see that the enemy definitely is starting to actually be able to hit us. Yeah, that's a broken windshield. Pretty much able to hit us um, at this distance. They're close enough to, to shoot, pretty much. They're close enough to kill some of our men. Um, and they were before with the mortars, but now they're actually close with their rifles, their machine guns, etc. So we got to be extra careful. I love those tracer rounds. Does anybody think it's kind of interesting that the Germans uh, have that green tracer? I, I think it's really beautiful. It seems the Soviets use the red tracer more. I'm not sure which would be more expensive. This look, look, looks like this commander is using a Tokarev uh, to try and shoot at our trenches. I got to give it to him. He's a badass. I would gladly take him prisoner and try to uh, have him drafted into our army if he would accept. Pretty sure there are SS units um, that are made up of uh, foreign volunteers. So this was only late war, though, 44, 45. So it probably doesn't apply to this campaign. 
Nice. Oh, that guy's dead. Oh, we even heard that. Yeah, completely knocked down. So he might still be moving. But if we don't kill him, then this freezing cold weather will. And I think now we can definitely call it a blizzard. Um, it's gotten really nasty. The weather is bad. Put it that way. What do we got here? Looks like an enemy truck. It's just a God's truck. We might actually be able to take that position, guys. Now I'm really tempted to grab the rest of these guys. Yep, they're going as a group. Good, good, good. So there is a chance, although I think it's unlikely, that we can take that area. All right, guys, we'll be right back. I think next time, hopefully, we'll be at the end of the battle. But this one, just, they don't seem to want to give up no matter what, man. Uh, I guess since, you know, they've had a lot of difficulty pushing forward in previous battles, I'm sure Stalin sent down the order that if they don't take it this time, some commanders are probably going to be going to... Oh, boy. Uh, oh, boy, guys. Out. Well, our Valhalla squad is definitely going to be going to Valhalla. <laughs> let's just put it that way. So, guys, um, remember the guys we sent forward? We found uh, the Soviets here. We definitely, definitely found them. And with good reason, uh, some of our men, most of them even, I hope, uh, just surrendered here. This was just pure instant death. Uh, but we saw that the enemy absolutely has def defenses around Sovkoz. Uh, so at this point, uh, more than ever, I think it's very important that we pretty much just hold our position here. We need our Stugs for that. We need daylight for that even. Um, or maybe we go under the cover of night, but with some additional tank support. Either way, we, we need some support for that. We can't break through that on our own. It's just not going to be possible. Um, at this point, I would offer a ceasefire. But I don't think the enemy will accept it. I honestly haven't had many situations in Graviton Tactics where I give the AI a ceasefire offer and they accept. It's usually they have to ask first. So we're just going to sit back and wait, boys. And hopefully pretty soon we will have the end of the battle here for you. Unfortunately, that push on Sovkoz was a complete miserable failure. I'm hoping we make up for it with all the casualties we got uh, with the Soviets attempting to cross. And, of course, the burning Dhaka that continues to burn. I mean, that structure is still on fire. It just amazes me uh, that it hasn't gone out yet. It's still up in flames, giving away enemy positions if they come near. And for that, I adore it. Okay, looks like the enemy has finally seen reason, folks, and they're going to go ahead and uh, offer us a ceasefire. I've never been so happy to accept one, even though I think we've done pretty well in this battle. Uh, it's been a bloodbath for both sides. You can see over here our men got hit pretty hard. I'm amazed that that um, AT gun survived that blast. Pretty much happened right in front of it uh, when I wasn't recording, and they made it. So it's going to be a draw. I'll take a draw. I always thought that the gravity team system for victories, draws, whatever, was a little strange um, to be... To be frank, that being said, we can see here casualties-wise, we only lost 11 men. Uh, 23 men lost on the Soviet side, 80 wounded. Pretty much the same on both. Um, the worst part for us is that six men that surrendered to the enemy. I hope that us SS men don't give away important information to the Soviets. I don't think they will, but um, just something to be concerned about. That being said, overall, pretty decent here. And I think we just need to go ahead next turn and attack. Let's take a look at the map and see what it looks like. All right, guys, so there we go. Pretty straightforward. Um, we held the position. That's good. We still have that enemy position right here in the north, and that's where I want to take the Stug and push into that area to take that area from the enemy. Our next battle, though, is going to be a defense with just uh, one uh, mere LSAH, one battle group, pretty much, of infantry. We've got enough ammo, but we are defending against two enemy cavalry units. Uh, and you might laugh and think, oh, a cavalry, that's hilarious. This cavalry, it's not the kind that comes on horses. Uh, but it's also not the kind that comes, you know, in a tank. That being said, these cavalry units are pretty aggressive, and I think it's going to be a miracle if we can hold this area. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, make sure to check out the playlist too. Share it on social media. Get the news of this channel and this uh, this playthrough out there, guys. I want to get as many viewers as possible. Thank you so much. I'll catch you on the next one.